everyone. So uh, I'm here talking to my good friend, Warren Buckleitner from Children's Technology Review, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the iPad and the uh, really cool stuff that uh, you can do with the iPad, especially for younger kids, like three to seven years old. So you've had the iPad for about a week, and you've already come to some conclusions about the educational value, especially for smaller kids or for younger kids, I should say. So can you talk a little bit about what you see the iPad doing for younger kids, especially? The iPad is uh, a perfect storm in terms of usability, and that's why it is so important. Um, the convergence of mostly for young children touch. I mean, children learn with their fingers. And so when they can touch and manipulate with the multi-touch idea, and that applies not just the iPad, but to Surface. And so really the moment for me was when I was... Uh, when I first saw the iPhone and the iPod Touch, and I saw kids playing with that, I got really excited by some of those early apps. And then, actually, it goes back before that to uh, back the '80s when we were using touch screens. And my, we had preschoolers who tried to crawl inside the computer. They got up on the table and actually tried to get in there. And you know, it was that kind of an experience. And I'm thinking, you know, so. Um, this idea that now that it's this size, that's really the, the only thing that the iPad adds is the size. Yeah, and that's the game changer, you think? It's that and the Wi-Fi and the App Store and the 100,000 programmers behind it. But you us. had that on the iPhone or the Touch, but yeah. the, si the, the, the footprint being different is, is what really changes the whole thing for kids. It, 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 it's, it's a, it's, it's, um, gets it into the zone where a lot more things are possible. Um, a lot of things in, you know, if you look at it from an anth anthropological perspective, a lot of things that you look at are kind of this size, like books and, you know, worksheets and so on. And so a lot more things fall into this uh, sort of a sweet spot of usability. And that combined with multi-touch, it's just uh, opens a new uh, pipeline into the child's mind. So what are some of the apps that you found that you think are really compelling from a, from a younger child? And, and tell us, like, how old are you talking about when you look at some of this stuff? Well, that's the thing about this is it's drop computing down. Uh, with the mouse, it used to be two and a half, really. There was a window between um, 24 and, and 30 or so months where a child could figure out the mouse. This has dropped it down to 18 months to even 12 months. In other words, if you see... A, um, an object and you jab at it, you can make things happen. But I mean, the most elemental is finger pain. Right. You know, and the idea that I can, I can get this conceptually. And so there's a lot of drawing kinds of things. Right. And okay, you go, or the critics will say, well, what's the value add to this that you can't do with paper? Well, how about that? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of neat. Well, nice. you can take the crayon out of the box, though. I mean, isn't that? Uh, that's not, true. Not the same. And you know, it just doesn't <laughs> smell the same. <laughs> uh, but the fact that you can undo, and I always say the, the cool thing is if uh, Michelangelo had an undo, <laughs> just think what that marble would have looked like. That's right. And this gives you that. Along with stickers and in the fact that you can export this to your right. photos and all that, so kids can represent right up the flicker, right? Piaget called this representation. You know, the the idea that you can make something stand for something else, um, the manipulation and all that. It's it's really cool. There's this whole set of new kinds of puzzles that you can you can get to. Here's an easy one, where I, I can start to let kids experiment with relationships in ways I couldn't have done before. And again, it's that virtual manipulative concept. It's almost like a Rubik's Cube, huh? but but kind of... Yeah, so I... Oh, I know, so i got to get that up there. And it, it's just... It takes sort of a, an old play pattern that um, gives kids new ways to play with, play with it. So that's cool. Uh, there's another one here I was just playing with called Chimes. And it, notice how easy it is for me to get in and out of right. things. That reversibility is so part of this. Um, I've given this already to two-year-olds, and they immediately get this button that they can get in and out. That yeah. right there is such a powerful idea. So I can bring in classification and, and sorting, um, seriation, 
are part of any kind of curriculum, right? But adding a temporal element to it so that there's actually this manipulative component. Now I've got a, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> but, you know, I can sit here and, and take out all the reds, and with that, I'm going to get that one. Oh, uh, so it's a game, too. Yeah, so... Got it. I'm scoring points. So, like, there's red, so I'm going to get that one. That wave goes out, and boom, got dissolves it. it. So i got to get rid of those yellows and purples. That gets rid of those. So I'm looking at, at books, and how do you take children's books and make them living books with this? So... uh it's remembering what I was doing. That's cool. But, so, making the words come to life is what you want to do here. So, it's got the touch and explore. So, um, if I hit alligator... The word comes up and hits it. And so here's an, an attribute of software I like. I, it, it's, I call it digital Play-Doh. So I can just manipulate it as much as I want. And it gives me the sense of control. So what should go there? Aunt Annie. Aunt Annie. Aunt Annie. Aunt Annie. Aunt Annie. And I'm done with that. So it's, it's keeping up with me. Big B, Got little it. B. All right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and what will happen is... You can give your child this, and they'll enjoy the story, because it's a good story. It's Dr. Seuss. The quality is there. But then there's this new element where they can associate the, the language with the pictures. Very cool. They're going to pick up words. So what's missing from the iPad? Anything? I mean, if, if you, uh, in version 2 or <clears throat> you know the next generation of the iPad, is it going to have something that uh, is going to be even a more benefit to smaller kids? When I first saw this, I'm thinking like, okay, uh, wouldn't it be cool if there was a stylus? Yeah. And, you know, you could do handwriting and all your worksheets. Like a real could be done. Exactly. And it, this is capacitive, so I don't know why there couldn't be a way to make a fine point stylus like a Nintendo, uh, to change it from multi-touch to mono-touch. So that's one thing that I don't see... Uh, Apple working on. Um, I'm sure they're thinking about it. I'm also, I've, I saw a thing at CES that actually, it was like a brush that had the capacitive um, simulator, so it thought it was a finger. And But I'm really interested in that. I think that, you know, like I used to be in a, in a band, I mean, what if you could give all these to every kid and this is the new music stand? And the teacher wants to pass out a new song, Boom. Right. It goes out wirelessly. Cool. The potential for using this to deliver material is, is huge. This is going to make, uh, make uh, textbooks obsolete, obviously. Um, but for assessment, it could be really cool. All right. Thanks a lot, Warren. Hey, anytime. Appreciate it, man. Always good to talk with you.